the secret weapon that we've all got is our imagination. And you can use that anytime. And probably some of the best training sessions that I did throughout my career were in my bed before going to sleep at night, just picturing myself making runs and batting the way I wanted to bat against the bowlers that I'm going to be up against. And we've all got that superpower, but not everyone uses it. Century on debut. You mentioned that lean patch. As a player, then do you recall the 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 things that you were thinking back then? Were you overthinking your game? I sat in the dark for two or three hours and I thought about every innings that I'd played from the backyard through school, club and first class cricket. And I realized that there was a very different um, my thinking on the good days was very different from my thinking on the bad days. And I realized during that session of reflection that I basically had got myself out nine times out of 10 up to that point. Okay, it had been contributed to by good bowling and good fielding, but basically it was a mental error that had brought about my mistake. And I realized that from that point on, I had to work on my mental skills more than my physical skills. I could spend thousands of hours trying to develop my physical skills and not get any better. But if I could improve my mental skills, then I could get much better. And I, I realized also that um, the big realization, apart from the fact that I got myself out of nine times out of 10 up to that point, was that that was probably going to be the case for the rest of my career. So if I could delay the inevitable, I had to make more runs. And so what I realized was that I did have a routine. On the good days, I tended to use a routine of concentration. You know, I had a mental routine that helped me to be focused. On the bad days, I didn't use it at all or rarely. And that was the big revelation for me was that I had to develop that routine to such a degree that I was managing my inner game every ball. And from that day onwards, I went out, uh, they, the selectors picked me in the next test match in Melbourne. Um, I don't know why, because I hadn't made any, any more runs, but I think they'd probably got to the point where we've got to find out whether he's any good or not. We're not going to find out with him being 12th man and there's no Sheffield Shield cricket for him to play just now. So might as well pick him. And I got 100 in the second innings of, uh, of that test match. And then I followed it up with 180 in the Sydney test match the next week. And from the day I started using that routine, my batting went to another level. And basically, you know, what I learned from the experience is that concentration is nothing more than focusing on what's important right now. And if I could concentrate for one ball, I could concentrate for a thousand balls because I only had to concentrate one ball at a time. And a big part of my routine was to make sure after each delivery that I switched off and then switch back on before the next delivery, basically to get rid of the last one and make the next one my major focus, my only focus. And Really, that was the turning point for me. And, and I think it's the, the area that cricket still doesn't understand, that physical, obviously, you know, when you get to the first-class level, you can obviously play. You wouldn't have got that far without having made a lot of runs or taken a lot of wickets. But whether you go any further from that point is totally dependent upon your mental skills and your ability to learn from from your experiences. And I think this is the last frontier for cricket to, to understand that we've got to stop coaching physical skills, start coaching mental skills, particularly once we, you know, once players get to a reasonably high level of, of ability, that to focus on mental skill, sorry, to focus on physical skills from that point onwards is probably going to take the player backwards, not forwards. And you know, I see never-ending net sessions that are an absolute waste of time. 
And uh, until such time as we understand that coaching is about helping the player develop his whole person, it's not about how good the forward defence or the back defence is, and it's not about not getting out. It's about learning how to score runs. And I think that's the biggest lesson that cricket still has to learn. Yes, are you of the belief then, even when a player goes into a net session to practice those mental routines that they would eventually then go and take out into a game? Absolutely. I and mean, that's all I, from that day onwards, from the day in, in Hobart, that's all I practice. I mean, I was hitting balls, obviously, because that was part of what I was doing while I was there. But what I practiced from that day onwards was responding ideally to the ball that was bowled to me. And if I walked out of a session and I had responded appropriately 100% of the time, then that was a great session. If I'd only responded appropriately 50% of the time, then I had to get better at it because 50% wasn't going to be good enough in a game. And I don't know how you walk out into a game with confidence if you haven't prepared those mental skills before you get there. If you've spent the days leading up to the game just developing your physical game and just hitting balls, then how are you going to respond to the different situations that crop up in a, in a game? And what and I've spoken to a lot of the best players since you know during my time and since my time, and every one of them, whether they know it or not, is developing their mental skills and have a very strong routine, mental routine that they go through both at training and and in games. It's rarely talked about. And people only ever notice how many balls they hit, but they don't notice that while they're there, they're putting themselves into, situa into game situations that they are likely to be confronted with in the game coming up, whether it's a red ball game or a white ball game. They're putting themselves into situations that they expect to confront. And they're picturing themselves batting against the bowlers that they will be up against, not the fellow that's running in this day, but... You know, and also trying to find the types of bowlers if they if the opposition they're coming up against has got left arm fast bowlers or left arm spinners, then try and find someone that can bowl similarly. But if you can't, the secret weapon that we've all got is our imagination. And you can use that anytime. And probably some of the best training sessions that I did throughout my career were in my bed before going to sleep at night, just picturing myself making runs and batting the way I wanted to bat against the bowlers that I'm going to be up against. And we've all got that superpower, but not everyone uses it. And it is a superpower because it is so powerful. There is no difference. As far as your brain is concerned, there is absolutely no difference between an innings you play in your bedroom to one that you play in the middle. If you can emotionalize it, you can actually feel it and see it and hear it. It happens.